In this video, we will learn to create this 3D model completely from scratch in AutoCAD using the projections that are provided. And one interesting thing is we are also going to see how we can use ChatGPT to find out and resolve the errors in the design. So I have the projections. You can see that this is the projections that I have downloaded from a website known as cadexpert.com. And this projection contains all the necessary dimensions that we want. So let's just get started. So first thing that I'm going to create is this part. There are many other ways to reach out this figure, but I'm going to create this part first. So you can see that its dimension are given, which is the radius of the circular section is 25 and from center to center, its distance is 60. So we have to create this one completely like this. So let's just start a fresh page in AutoCAD first. And then I'm going to select the right plane. Make sure that you are in a 3D modeling. I'm going to select the right plane. And in the right plane, first I'm going to create a line. Make the ortho on. And this line will be of 60. And at one end of this line, we have to create the circle of radius 25. And then what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a line from this part to the vertex of this circle. So using the snaps, you can easily snap out the points. On the other end also, I'm going to do the same. Trim out the unnecessary sections. So I'm going to use trim and I'm going to trim this part, this part. We don't require this line right now. And since this figure is not joined, so we have to join it. So select the figure completely. Type J in the command box and the first tool you will get, which is the join. Click on the enter and you can see that it has joined the figure into a one polyline. Since to extrude the parts, we require a polyline. So this is the figure that we have to extrude. So what will be the extrusion value? It is given that it is 40. I'm going to extrude on both sides symmetrically. So 20 on one side and 20 on the other side. We are going to use press pull. We can use extrude also, but press pull will be more flexible. Select 20 over here and then on the I'm going to move it and from here also we have to make it 20. We have got this part ready. You can see that in the realistic we have this one ready. And now again I'm going for the right plane. And then I'm going to create the cylindrical features which is this one over here. This is radius is given or the diameter is given, which is 60. So again, I'm going for the circle, select the center one, which is this one and which will uh, having the diameter value of 60, select the diameter, make it 60. And again, I'm going to extrude this one on both sides. So what will be the value? You can see that 120 it is given, which is 120 over here. So symmetrically, it will be 60 on both sides. So I'm going to select the press pull, make it 60. And on the other side also, we are going to do the same, but it becomes very difficult to select the press pull right now. You can see that over here, it is creating the problem. The same problem will be with the extrusion also. So what I have to do, I have to select the left plane again, and I have to recreate the circle. So select the circle from the center again. And this time I'm going to do the press pull or the extrusion, any one for this circle. Select the circle, make it 60. So you can see that on the both side, we have got the cylindrical feature ready. But in the 2D YFM, you can see that these two are not combined. So these three are different solid bodies. So we have to combine them into a one. So we are going to use this solid combine tool. So I'm going to select the solid combine and then I'm going to select the whole part once. Just make it enter and you can see that now it has combined into a one design. Now comes the complicated part, which is the arms. So as I've told you that this figure contains some error and that is the correct position of this radius value is not given, which is 17.50. So 
so it's in client values given that its center to center distance from this bigger circle is 100 which is the inclined value but in this figure it is not provided that what will be its exact position so am i correct or not since i have correctly observed the figure or not so to find out we are going to use a chat gpt and in the chat gpt i have uploaded the design you can see that this is a design which i have uploaded from from this part you can click on this icon and upload it from the computer and i have told a prompt to chat gpt that in my observation the correct position of radius 17.50 is not clear whether i am correct it or wrong and if i am wrong can you help me find out its correct position so if i will be wrong then chat gpt will help me in finding out the correct position and in the response chat gpt has given me that i am correct the exact position of radius 17.50 is not provided but it has given me an alternative it has find out that using the symmetrically aligned figure it has given me an observation that the radius or the distance will be x in the x direction it will be of 60 units and in the y direction it will be of 40 units so the center of the radius 17.50 will be 60 40 it is an assumed distance so it has not given me an exact distance it has assumed it and it has given me all the correct explanation like why it has observed that distance so let's just go for the chat gpt since the value is not given so we are going to create it we are going to create the radius 17.50 circle at 60 by 40 so again i'm going for the right plane okay so i'm going for the right plane and now to reduce the complications i'm going to create it over here so this will be 60 horizontally okay so it has created 6 60 and vertically it will be 40 so this is a position where the circle will be so i'm going to create a circle of radius 17.50 over here and this circle will be of radius again this bigger one which is 30 radius which is 60 we can create over here as well but it may become com it may become complicated so to reduce this i'm going to create this figure over here and later on later on i'm going to attach it with the design now i have to create two lines like this but uh, it is very difficult to find out the tangent so i'm going to switch off every other snaps and only the tangent will be there if you can able to easily snap the tangent then you don't have to switch off but in my case i'm going to switch off and i'm going to exactly snap the tangents like this now once then i'm going to switch on every other constraints like this use the trim feature again and trim out this part the parts that we don't require like this also and then i'm going to join it into a one again using the j enter and now this has been joined into one now we have to extrude this what will be its extrusion value let's just find out so given that the complete distance is 120 and in this figure you can find that this has 60 this is 20 and this is 20 so combinedly it becomes 100 so a 120 minus 100 which is 20 we have left with so both will having the tenth distance and then i'm going to extrude it to the distance of 10 now we have got this one but there are two arms so i'm going to make this one as copy so i'm going to use the copy command select this one simple copy tool will going to work over here now we have to attach these two arms with this complete figure so how to do that for that i am going to make it in the top view and here you can see that these arms are at a distance of 20 so we have to find out its location so how to make it so i am going to use a line command for the reference i am going to select this point and from here we know that it's 20 so this will be the position of one arm and similarly on the other part also we have to make it 20 and this is the position of the other arm also so we have got these positions you can see that this is one position and this is another one 
now I'm going to use the move command. So you have to properly move it. You can see that at 20, the extrusion will be inside. So this I'm talking about this extrusion, which will be inside. And here, this is the 20 over here. 20 will come over here. So extrusion will be in this direction. So make sure that you have to correctly grab the points. So I'm going to click on this move. I'm going to select this part to move. Select this center part or the center part of this face since we want the extrusion to be inside. So say so correctly, we have to select this center one. And then I'm going to place this one till this point. So here the major thing is how you are grabbing the points. Here we are going to snap the outer face. So I'm going to select the move again, select this one. And I'm going to select this outer face point to snap it. Let's place this one over here. Now it's time to combine everything. So select that solid combine union, select it, press enter. And now you can see that the figure is combined into a one complete design. Now the basic figure is ready. Now it's time for the cut out section. So you can see that there are four cutouts, which are two on the arms, one on this one and one on the center cylinder. The radius value is 20, no, diameter is 25 for both the arms and the, this part. And for the central cylinder, it's having the 30. So now I'm going to use dynamic UCS as well as the press pull for this operation. Make it 2D and you can see that with these two, it becomes very easy. I'm going to use the dynamic UCS. It means that UCS will going to shift on the faces that we are going to select. Select the circle. So what will be the radius value, which is 20.12.5. Similarly, I have to snap this one also. So with the dynamic UTS, it becomes very easy to snap the points. And this third one, which is over here, this one, we have to select the face first, and then we have to snap the points. So its value will be 30. Okay, so 30 will be that diameter will be 30. 20, uh, 15 will be its radius value. Use the press pull, select the press pull. Select it, press pull it and it will going to cut and select the area and it will going to cut. So you have to select the inside part of the circle. Then you have to press pull and it will going to behave as a cut operation. Now I'm going to move this figure so that all the references, these are the references that we don't require now. So I'm going to delete this all references. So finally we have got the model ready. So this is how we can create a complete 3D model right from scratch using the 2D projections. I hope you like this video. Please do press the subscribe button for the updates like this and press the like button if you like this video. Thank you and catch up you in the next one.